Okay, that's great. And uh, then uh, please let me know if you can see my screen. Basically, it should just say the power of Power BI ecosystem. Yes. Yes. Okay, okay perfect. Uh, before uh, we start going into the topic, I would like uh, to start with a story. And the story is well known by everyone, I think. And the story is about President Kennedy who came to NASA if I'm not mistaken, and um, he saw some uh, man who was a cleaner and asked uh, him what he is doing. And uh, the answer was, uh, do you guys remember what was the answer? In the story? Going to send a man to the moon? Yes. Thank you so much. Um, yes, and the answer was, uh, I'm helping to send the man to the moon. I really enjoy this story and this attitude. And for uh, all my life, uh, work life, I was uh, trying to find something similar to myself, uh, to be as inspired as, as that uh, man, that, that cleaner man. It's another question why uh, President Kennedy didn't know who was that guy and what he was actually doing and why she, he was asking those questions, but the story is quite interesting. And um, yeah, there is another short story that's actually talking about my motivation for this presentation and how the whole idea was, was born. So let's start. Uh, I've been soft um, a bit more than a year ago, and it was uh, in August of 2020. And uh, during my week of uh, onboarding, uh, I've uh, seen this um, article by Taras Baczynski uh, with a description of actionable insight ecosystem. At, this mo at that moment, for me, it was something like uh, man on the moon. <laughs> I liked how it sounded and uh, I liked the approach uh, described there. And I was thinking, hmm, how I'm working as a BI developer and uh, data warehouse developer, how I actually contribute uh, to this um, actionable insights ecosystem. And then uh, in March of 2021, um, we've got an interesting case and uh, uh, where the uh, client wanted to utilize fully uh, Power Platform um, as a full stack data platform without any additional um, uh, external tools. So this was a pretty interesting challenge for me. And uh, I wouldn't uh, be as inspired as I was if uh, again in March, I haven't met my uh, uh, colleague on this use case, Nicola Sidoruk, uh, who uh, gave great support and um, mentoring and uh, uh, friendship probably to uh, deal with all the uh, challenges we've uh, uh, faced together and uh, it helped to enjoy the process <laughs> of uh, uh, developing what we are developing. And then in August, basically, uh, our administration came and asked uh, to make some presentation <laughs> for our community. And uh, it was a bit tricky because I wasn't sure what to talk about. And uh, um, like we are doing Power BI reports, so what, what we, what's new we can share on the uh, community uh, event. Uh, but uh, you should first start thinking about it, right? And then you have some vision of how to share your thoughts. And um, the last uh, drop of water uh, was um, the quote that I've, um, uh, read somewhere. It was a quote of a Georgian poet Shota Rustavelli, and um, uh, it's actually, you see it on the screen, it's what you give out is yours and what you do not is lost. So uh, sharing something with people on such community event, I've discovered that it's great opportunity to um, share something and to uh, bring some thoughts to discuss all together that would be uh, beneficial for myself as well. And uh, we can start from here, I think, uh, to go in more details about what they actually, let me move this line somewhere there. Um, somewhere. Okay, let's put it here until it's not 
it's messy. So what's uh, this actionable insights ecosystem for me uh, with my current uh, understanding of this? It could include data strategy. And uh, as uh, Gartner says, uh, data strategy, uh, just to have common glossary, you know, uh, is something is a highly dynamic process employed to support um, acquisition, organization, analysis, uh, and delivery of data in support of business objectives. Um, it's nice wording, uh, nothing to add from my side because uh, usually data strategy uh, just considered as a number of is a big number of activities. But in this phrase, it's uh, uh, like consolidate all of the uh, types of actions that needs to be taken. Another piece is uh, data culture, and it's an uh, organizational culture of data-driven decision-making. Uh, it's a uh, Aaron Kelb, Kelb uh, from Malaysia who made this uh, short description. And at this point, I would like to ask you, what other kind of cultures do you know? Please be brave and tell something or type something. It will be very helpful to me. So we embrace data culture nowadays and uh, we uh, say that everyone wants to develop this data culture, but what are the other types of culture instead of what we are trying to build it? Any volunteers? No? Okay, uh, then I'll make a hint. There are uh, other uh, two types, uh, considered two types of culture. Uh, one is um, uh, the hierarchical culture, when the main value is uh, like status or authority of people and we have hierarchy and all the decisions, they are made uh, based on this hierarchy. And we have something. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Lack of data culture is data culture itself. In some in some point, uh, I agree with this. Uh, so we have another like it's uh, hierarchical. When uh, people who are uh, higher in hierarchy, they are uh, trying to. Um, they're not trying, but they are actually uh, main decision makers, and they uh, bring the biggest. Um, um, uh, value in the in, in the decision making. Another type of the, uh, culture that uh, can be considered is uh, called like consensus. And uh, in this culture, the uh, main value is uh, agreement of people who are uh, who are working on something. If we talk about some uh, non um, profitable organizations, uh, for them um, maybe this agreement can be a quite good option or um yeah or like uh, on the elections uh we all uh, make uh, our votes and uh, it's like agreement uh, way of decision making but now we are talking about data culture and the main value here is data and decision making that is done based on the actual proofs that we can see in data okay and okay 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 yeah, and the last uh, but not least uh, point, like main point for this actionable insight ecosystem uh, would be self-service BI, when um, end user can design and deploy their own reports and analysis within the approved and supported architecture and tools portfolio. Again, uh, Gartner uh, helped with this uh, quite nice definition that I thank them very much. And um, uh, basically, yes, yeah, that's the... Uh, nice goal that uh, many companies want to achieve is that uh, their people, they um, have everything they need to uh, get the insights from data uh, they sell themselves and uh, support their daily decisions ma decision making uh, easily with the tools uh, that they have. So it's something like that. Keep calm and treat yourself. <laughs> like do your uh, data analysis yourself and uh, uh, just um, just do it. You know, yeah, it's like what is very very desirable by many uh, companies. Uh, next few few slides uh, will uh, look at what actually they are 
uh, need to decide before before they or like once they once they start to move in that direction, and then we'll uh, come closer to the Power BI service uh, and the functionality that it has. So, uh, when company decide that they want to have self service BI, uh, it sounds very nicely to them, uh, and maybe it means that they don't do, uh, shouldn't do nothing; they just should. Uh, say people like do it <laughs> but it's not and uh, there are um, like three general approaches uh, of course in uh, each company uh, it also can be some mixture of them but uh, in general um, uh, we have the separation of business led self-service bi uh, when there is no uh, strongly uh, managed centralized uh, it department yet probably yet or um that uh, uh, lead um uh, bi uh, development but we have strong business side that has uh, their super users and they are uh, leading this approach so it's like bottom up approach when people uh, start to explore tools themselves and start to um, build reports for themselves because they need it they understand that even though they don't have enough uh, infrastructure they don't have um, enough uh, centralized guidance but they um, like need to have some uh, tool for daily uh, decision making and uh, it's called business net self service bi and um, uh, another thing is a managed self service bi uh, when uh, there is strong it department and they um, govern and uh, they own uh, all the infrastructure, all the access to the data, and basically report creation goes from um, users. They ask to uh, build some reports. They, so they go to IT department and ask, please, please give us uh, some uh, reports. Uh, we, don't, we don't have anything to support our decision making. And uh, uh, another, uh, sorry. Uh, it was like the corporate BI part. And um, IT managed self service BI is like this blended approach uh, where uh, there is um, uh, some um, like distribution between the, uh, between the roles and uh, uh, between the uh, access uh, to do different uh, parts of the uh, BI development cycle between uh, IT and uh, business users. And for each company, this approach would be um, their own based on their structure and their people type in their organization. So it um, should be decided on case by, by case basis. But what it um, influences is uh, how the further development of this uh, uh, infrastructure will go based on the uh, selected delivered approaches. Um, there is, there is something I wanted to ask you in the beginning, but I have not done this. If you have um, something to ask or to discuss, uh, please, uh, yeah, please drop a message here or just unmute yourself and uh, just just tell. So don't uh, uh, be shy to interrupt me. Interrupt, interrupt me. <laughs> I'll be glad to have the input. Uh, users don't have enough knowledge about underlying data. Yes. Uh, complex data warehouse, star schema, my um, um, Yeah, there is such challenges and we'll see how they can be uh, managed and uh, they should be managed somehow. Uh, and uh, yeah. Um, okay. And uh, the uh, way how the uh, company should support um, this challenge of that many users doesn't have uh, knowledge of how to do so, uh, read this reporting is uh, ultimate uh, guidance uh, and uh, materials uh, and um, uh, trainings and also support enablement inside the company. So there should be a group of people that will help uh, business users to learn, to test, to uh, try to build something themselves and uh, it's additional uh, additional amount of costs that should be invested and uh, people that should uh, work uh, closely with uh, uh, the community to um, educate them and to show and to um, uh, like uh, to show the uh, best practices and uh, to make them uh, power users to start from one power user in one department but then grow and make everyone able 
Um, another slide just show how the roadmap of uh, BI adoption, I wouldn't say it's only for Power BI, I would say in general, BI adoption goes in company. Uh, it's um, something that uh, our clients should keep in mind and uh, uh, we just need to make sure that we also knowing, know about that and we advise them uh, that they should keep in mind of all these items. So uh, building this data culture, how it can be achieved. Uh, there should be strong willingness of executives uh, to support uh, in financial and in uh, time spent and in resource spent uh, manner. Uh, there should be defined rules for content ownership and management who would be the owner of each piece of the raw data, of model data, of like clean data, of data sets. Um, there, is, uh, should be, um, there should be content delivery scope, so some priorities um, uh, of uh, what areas are more important in what period of time. There should be a group of people that will be like the center of excellence to advise uh, on the best practices. Uh, to advise on the way of how to govern and uh, maybe even do system oversight, uh, that will do this mentoring and user enablement, that will share community of practice um, and like build this community of practice and provide uh, user support. Uh, all this is uh, necessary to exist in order to uh, make this um, make just users uh, Power BI users or like BI users, self service BI users. And this is like end of the strategical and very theoretical part and start of uh, more power service uh, tactical part, I would say. So how those uh, nice words can be more uh, actually implemented using power BI service. And here I would like to start with the question. What is the general, okay, let's see what we, Yeah, our users. <laughs> uh, and very often it's uh, just people who um, like to share their knowledge and uh, just make these initiatives um, uh, on their own willingness. But it's nice when it's uh, not um, some unique cases, but just uh, a practice, you know, common practice uh, and uh, inside the company structure. Mm, yeah, and my question would be, what is the uh, common uh, common uh, phrase and common request when we talk about BI projects? It can be Power BI, uh, Tableau, Click, whatever. So what is general request? What uh, clients uh, want to do? We need uh, one red button and this button should generate for us all the reports. <laughs> no, uh, we want- no, no, Not red, itself. green one. <laughs> okay, uh, pretty much, yeah. Uh, I don't have phrase about button, but um, uh, on, in my uh, case, I said that it's like, let's create a report and get an insight from our data. So and, and why, why it doesn't look like my Excel? Why, what can I do? The same what I can do with my Excel. <laughs> How yeah. do I export it to Excel? <laughs> yes, usually they want to have a flexibility over data to generate their own slices. Yeah. Yeah, of course they want, they have time uh, to do that. Uh, but the, the most, uh, this insight, right, to get uh, the value from data is uh, very critical. Um, but what actually it means, like it's uh, the, um, uh, the ask that they, sorry, and um, what it means and how we understand it is that we need to enable uh, data discovery inside the company we need to enable understanding of this data, maybe for ourselves, if we are doing it uh, ourselves or for uh, if we are talking about self-service BI, it should be enabled for the actual um, users and uh, company employees. Uh, we should enable security and make sure that um, only relevant data is exposed and of course access. Uh, we need to enable maintenance of these data sources, uh, data sets and reports. Uh, we need to make sure that this data is actual um, after it's discovered and understood. So it, it should be actual all the time uh, within the whole organization. And for me, oh, sorry. 
Uh, it's not my picture, but I found it quite relevant that uh, we also we always have this uh, you know iceberg and just peak of it. It's just some insights and dashboards and what should be done. But underneath we have huge amount of work that uh, should be done in order to achieve it. And uh, how we can do that? And we have we are coming closer to the agenda. Real check the time. Okay. Um, how we can achieve so uh, discovery and understanding of the data uh, it basically can be done uh, using power bi artifacts themselves so those uh, items those uh, objects that we do ha do have in power bi and uh, power bi service uh, and uh, data catalog or sometimes it's called data dictionary introduction inside the company uh, security and access uh, there are many places where it's done by um, uh, admin, uh, administrators in uh, Power BI, but uh, also uh, access and logic of how the data will uh, flow between the departments uh, is also coming to the uh, question of workspaces architecture. Uh, how to make the maintenance of the, all these items that we'll create. Uh, we'll talk a bit about deployment pipeline and orchestration. And the last one, actuality. Uh, it's more question of uh, data governance. And I added ML integration here because it's a highly um, popular question of how to edit and how to enable it. So how is possible to do within the Power BI service uh, will uh, show as well. Uh, and of course, people. On each stage of these um, items, we need to have people who would be responsible for uh, implementation of uh, these processes. Uh, and uh, we need to realize that it might be not one person, it should be, it not should be, but it, um, in big organization, it's like uh, one, at least one person on one direction or even more. So uh, let's be aware about it. Uh, Power BI artifacts. Um, I don't know how much of you already works with Power BI, so I'll just cover it in a um, in some general words, and you'll be able to dig deeper uh, if you wish. Uh, but uh, to name each of them and to describe uh, how they align with each other and how they fall in the overall architecture. So let's start from data flow, and uh, data flow in Power BI service it's a uh, um, way to connect to data source, uh, to get the data to proceed with ETL or ELT, it doesn't matter, it, uh, you can do both. Uh, it's a way to create uh, link entities. So when there is like one data flow and you can create another data flow on top of data flow. And from this perspective, there is usually, um, uh, um, let's stop here. Uh, so they are stored uh, underneath on a data lake. And um, by default, you cannot uh, access it from data lake side. But if you first create data lake and then connect it to Power BI uh, workspace, then you'll be able also to um, manipulate the data flows created in Power BI service uh, as a normal data lake. They are enabled, so this ETL and connection enabled uh, with Power Query language. Uh, M script language, and uh, uh, you'll be surprised, but a lot of operations can be done uh, using it. And it's uh, like uh, quite uh, fully, uh, uh, fully operable, operatable uh, uh, language. And you have loops there, you have uh, possibility to parse your data. So um, quite a nice tool. And uh, in overall architecture, this data flow, uh, um, act as a data warehouse. So if you um, have collection of these data flows, it would be something similar to data warehouse in traditional uh, understanding. Another piece is data sets that are created uh, from data flows. So on top of data flows. And uh, these uh, data sets are uh, designed with a star schema approach. And uh, we have um, different types of uh, way to get data there as direct query, as uh, import data or composed models. And uh, to do additional transformations, we have DEX uh, there. And uh, in terms of traditional way of uh, architecture, it's more like data marks. After we have data sets designed, uh, we have reports uh, with uh, 
full variety of visualizations, filters, data intelligence, drill down, drill through bookmarks, so you can create Power BI reports uh, that will uh, have quite sophisticated uh, uh, functionality and um, it's quite powerful tool um, among BI tools. Uh, another piece is dashboard, uh, and it's mostly most often it contains some uh, main, some key KPIs from reports uh, that you bring in, and you can have notification when uh, the uh, when this uh, KPIs achieve some target or they fall uh, less than some uh, value. So, um, but you can also just use it as a um, um, uh, as like consolidated uh, main KPIs from different reports as a one point to access it. But uh, telling the truth, uh, uh, Power BI uh, team are not um, so happy about distributing content through reports uh, directly, and they suggest to do it with apps. So apps is another uh, entity inside Power BI service that can combine in it reports, dashboards, uh, some documentation, and it's the main uh, item for content distribution in Power BI service. So it's like a small website with multiple reports and dashboards in it, and uh, it can, um, like administrator can enforce installing of this app in Power BI service, uh, so people consume exactly this application, and it's a proper way how it should be uh, distributed. Um, just to give reference for those who are not working with Power BI, how those artifacts are um, connected to each other. Um, so there is Power BI Desktop, a program that used, uh, that installed on the desktop and used for the uh, data sets and uh, like data connection, data sets, creation reports. And you can directly access data um, from uh, the data sources, um, but uh, in the uh, like cloud approach, the cloud approach is better not to connect from desktop to the data sources, but consume data from your data flows. So in this uh, way, if you uh, build your data model based on data flows, you already like connected to the cloud data warehouse. You are um, you will uh, decrease number of uh, duplicated data, and you will increase reusage of already connected uh, data sources uh, to your or better. Uh, there is also uh, when the report is created, it's published to Power BI service, and um, in Power BI service you have again this um, dashboard report data sets. Um, it's the one with the, without um, data flows, right? And uh, also reports can be consumed by mobile phones, mobile applications, uh, and all the data access is managed by uh, gateways. So just for those who are not working with Power BI. Um few words, let, let's, uh, we, I have a note that I should have a demo in Power BI service. So let's quickly look uh, how these items are, um, the page, uh, how these items are, look like in Power BI service, just for those who are not working with Power BI. Uh, this is Power BI portal, and uh, there is workspaces, it's uh, like folders, uh, in which data is organized uh, in, and stored inside the system. And if you go in this folder that is workspace, uh, there is content uh, that, that is reports and dashboards, it's called content. And there are uh, data sets and data flows uh, that are more like backend, right? Data piece of the um, our uh, BI uh, system. And uh, when we have uh, workspace with the data sets, data flows, and the reports and dashboards, it can be transformed easily to the app. And in applications, we can see this, for example, the sales dynamic. Application itself is a website uh, where you have connected your um, different pages of your report, of your dashboards, and you can uh, have additional uh, documentation added here, some links, some pages. So it's like a uh, small website uh, development uh, tool inside our best service. And that's the proper way to share the uh, content with the uh, users inside the company. Uh, let's go back. And let's, uh, uh, sorry. 
Okay, uh, so next piece is data catalog. Uh, it's an additional tool, uh, so there's something additionally to Power BI service uh, that uh, should enable uh, such activities as available data set search, uh, data sets evaluation. So to make sure that this data set is uh, uh, good and it can be used and data is relevant there because there can be many data sets, you know. Uh, it should enable data understanding uh, data set access, uh, it should give place for collaboration of people uh, in describing the um, data, in um, uh, making sure that all the changes that's done with data or with understanding of this data is reflected, and it should serve as like single source of truth uh, of uh, uh, overall company knowledge. And there are different tools that can help to do that, uh, like uh, Alation Data Catalog, like um, Microsoft Purview, uh, and uh, different data catalogs in, um, um, you know, with other providers. Uh, in uh, I will do some promotion. In our case, uh, we are building data catalog. We are trying to enable data catalog features ourselves with the Power BI um, report. Uh, capabilities with the connect uh, with the extraction all the metadata from Power BI service uh, through REST API and building report that will uh, serve this uh, all this uh, capabilities and all the documentation is done in uh, SharePoint. So it's like combination of SharePoint and Power BI uh, REST API data extraction that can also give this possibility of. Uh, data catalog features inside company. Uh, we'll have Mikola Sidoruk presentation uh, in the beginning of 2022, and uh, he's going to share more details on how technical is done and uh, how it can be uh, achieved. A uh, few words about workspaces architecture. As we just saw, uh, workspaces are just uh, folders, right? So if workspace is just a folder with files, uh, what we are going to architect? I was asking myself in the beginning of the project. Um, so we have uh, different artifacts. We have data flows, data sets, reported both apps, and we have um, different workspaces. And um, what are your suggestions? How do you suggest to organize these artifacts in workspaces? Any ideas? Suggestions? Uh, it depends on uh, business structure because sometimes we need to, uh, to differentiate or divide the workspaces by, by the process, by the technical process. And sometimes we need to, to split them by departments or business union, business yes. units of some type. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Andre. And um, it's exactly exactly two different um, uh, approaches of how to manage them. So one is organized by uh, business structure by department. So we have like one workspace for uh, sales uh, department, one workspace for HR, and another workspace for operational uh, or like production analytics. And uh, um, in each of these workspaces, uh, uh, all the artifacts, they will not uh, intersect at all. So we'll have just data flows, data sets, reports, dashboards here, and other, uh, all the um, types, all types of these data sets in another one. and. Uh, and for production, we also have their own data. Um, but uh, what is the limitations of this approach? What, what do you think? Uh, when we split by business unit, we, we will have a lot of uh, non-reusable code and, uh, and, and things. So we, we will repeat ourselves in data flows, data sets, and so on. So, Maybe it will be easier to create a common uh, a common part 
uh, where we store all the common data flows, data sets, and so on, and then create some sort of spoke uh, workspaces for every business unit. Absolutely. Thank you so much um, for sharing this and that exactly uh, the different use cases that we need to follow. So if organization is big enough, uh, we need to consider to split our um, like data sources, data sets. Uh, I mean, like data flows and data sets uh, in one place or even like data flows in one workspace, data sets in another workspace and reports and dashboards and apps as a content in another workspace. It depends from, uh, again, from use case to use case based on the uh, policy and the access that should be, um, uh, that should be added uh, to the, um, in the company. And, um, oh, let me switch. Uh, the first approach when we have, uh, it's actually what Microsoft describes. So if you have small team, uh, we have Power BI servers and one workspace with all the assets uh, in one place and we can then multiply uh, as many time, uh, like replicate uh, data uh, for the, uh, our need for other uh, departments. But if we have big enough organization to share the, um, to have some share, shared knowledge and shared workspace, so we have uh, another shared workspace where we have data flows and data sets that can be then consumed by other uh, workspaces to build the, um, the content based on these uh, workspaces. But of course, it's another um, piece of complexity, how to manage access properly uh, and how to publish uh, our uh, assets uh, with this kind of architecture. Because if we have just one workspace, we just have a report created in desktop and we then publish it to the uh, service and that's it. But now we have uh, one workspace where we need to push our data set and another workspace where we need to put the uh, UI part of our, like, uh, of our report. And it um, uh, leads us to the deployment pipelines so uh, yeah. in uh, yeah uh, uh, one one comment because we can still design it with multiple business uh, workspaces not one potentially and each um, department or business function would be responsible for their data sources and um, if other departments want to reuse some of the existing um, data flows and data sets they just need to turn to the owner of the given a data set and data flow uh, for uh, registering the usage of it. And um, yeah, like a little bit like data mesh concept. Um, so it helps to business to organize by business function, but also uh, share uh, and, and uh, reusability so that we have owner. It, it's of course works in business, big organizations, but uh, some idea. And uh, from this perspective, how easy it's uh, to make sure that uh, data sources are not uh, duplicated and uh, all the dictionary, uh, so all the departments speak common language in terms of definitions of different... Uh... Uh, it, you, you Basically, you won't um, enforce that the data won't be duplicated because it's up to uh, different departments or domains, um, product domains, that they, they have the freedom to create what they want. But if they want to, um, um, to use some domain data um, uh, from other department, um, they, they should use it basically. But you cannot enforce that they won't create something similar uh, what they need. Um, but basically it's, um, it helps to reuse what other domains are owners of. And maybe there is a need for some common uh, workspace for master data, but the rest of those um, data can be split by, by data domain. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you that it's, uh, um, it's possible to do without common uh, workspace. Mm -hmm. um, I would say maybe a bit more difficult to then, uh, as you said, to enforce yeah. not duplicating it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's possible for sure. And, and it's much more management involved um, in data, data cataloging so that yeah. um, everybody's aware what we actually have. 
in our Power BI uh, tenant. Yep. Yep. Agree. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, few words about deployment pipeline. Uh, it's functionality that is uh, available for the premium workspaces in uh, Power BI, and it gives you possibility to uh, push your uh, uh, data set uh, or report or dashboard uh, in the uh, environment of, like not but let's start from from this uh, it helps you to create, to create your development and test environment from your product environment so you have uh, some workspace already created and you started work uh, maybe with it already or not yet and then uh, it's automatically create uh, for you development and test environment and uh, the whole uh, like flow of um, how it's transfer from your uh, development uh, through test to production. So you just uh, uh, publish your report or dashboard to development environment. And with a few clicks of a button, you can go to test and share with your users for testing. And after it's tested, you uh, put it to production and you all, always have this uh, environment separated. Uh, but uh, still it's um, on the, uh, in, on the uh, not so uh, sophisticated tool yet and for example version control is not uh, yet covered uh, within this process uh, okay uh, another thing is the orchestration of uh, um, of the wall artifacts uh, refreshed and working uh, uh, nicely and more smoothly and um, uh, we first um, uh, faced with the issue when uh, our data sets were not successfully refreshed because uh, uh, the data flow refreshment didn't uh, didn't uh, like, did end yet uh, and that's why uh, like based on this practice we discovered uh, how flow from power platform can help to orchestrate uh, this process and let me go uh, to the uh, flow our platform to show the capability of how this uh, how this can be done if we go in uh, just our power platform um, it's like power automate and there are flows and if you um, create an automated cloud flow uh, there's possibility to use uh, to make it bigger uh, that is um, like uh, data flow oh, uh, when data flow refresh completes or data set complete, uh, refresh completes. So instead of just scheduling refresh of the uh, artifacts on specific times, if you don't know in advance how much time will it take, because it depends uh, on different factors, uh, it's uh, like a best practice to uh, make it through the uh, triggers on the power platform uh, to run the data sets refreshes only after data flows are already. Uh, refreshed. Uh, I don't want to start from the beginning. Do you guys know what is the um, hot key to okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so talking about power bear governance, how to enable it. Um, we had some message here. Okay, uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, we need to, how, like, what tools do we have uh, for uh, monitoring of what's going on with our users uh, and how they consume content is enablement of Power BI audit logs uh, and then analyzing of these logs. Uh, another is a very, very good structured and very good uh, implemented data dictionary and data catalog uh, with all the users um, uh, access description of the data source uh, and the description of what exactly pieces of information data sets can be used in which cases um, and uh, making sure that uh, it's uh, not described once but it's uh, done within the ownership and data stewards who are uh, owners of the descriptions and make sure that it's relevant uh, if there are changes in the um, in data source uh, and uh, uh, if there are changes in um, uh, how the business understands the data itself. And uh, it's another process of best practices adoption and knowledge sharing. 
So team of people who supports knowledge sharing and training of, uh, of users. Uh, it's a list of procedures, uh, procedures and uh, rules uh, that uh, in an efficient and transparent way describes how to work with all these artifacts and how to, um, how to deal with it. So um, it should be really well defined to make everyone uh, feel on the same side to uh, take the data, to push report and to uh, make experiments uh, with available data. And uh, okay. uh, yeah, and a few words about uh, machine learning integration. Um, if we remi uh, remind that our data flows that are entry entry point uh, of our data in Power BI service, they are stored in the uh, Azure Data Lake storage. Uh, and if we use our own Azure Data Lake, that we can uh, access the data in a uh, standard way as we work with data lakes, then they can be consumed directly uh, for um, Azure machine learning or cognitive services. And then uh, we can use uh, results um, put back to data flow and consumed by reports. So there is uh, quite smooth integration with this process uh, when the whole ecosystem works um, together. Uh, roles and responsibilities uh, needed. Uh, on a very high level, but it's very important to have this corporate management committee that are uh, very motivated and uh, uh, highly involved uh, in the uh, data culture development and social service BI implementation. So team of people on a top level who uh, make sure that all the decisions that need to be done on each stage, they are uh, done uh, properly and uh, in a timely manner. For the technical team, there should be a team, a team who will help with all the infrastructure, licensing, uh, and settings of uh, needed permissions. Uh, data engineers who are, uh, like now it's more separated in Power BI, uh, who work more on um, Power Query and MScript and all these ETL, ETL processes for uh, so data flows development. Uh, BI engineers that work more on content uh, development. Uh, on reports, dashboards, and applications. And um, I've wrote here like the promoters or consultants who uh, help uh, users to uh, educate them, to help them to develop uh, needed, um, to try to develop needed artifacts or try to um, uh, consume data catalog and all the artifacts properly. Uh, and the users uh, also, yeah, like, to different types of users. There are power users who already uh, built uh, some reports themselves and um, they just need more guidance with the best practices. And uh, some business users who are just uh, consuming reports without uh, any uh, try how to develop themselves. So they, have, uh, they, are, they need more guidance in um, try to build something uh, themselves easily from the available data sets without even developing a, a data themselves. So just consume data sets that already um, nicely designed data marts and uh, look at the data from different angles to, um, um, yeah, to get the insights. Uh, so small summary, uh, what we've uh, uh, looked through is um, uh, different levels of uh, the uh, BI implementation in company. Uh, we looked at the strategical level with the uh, like deciding where to, uh, how to deliver uh, BI. Is it in, should be done in the most centralized way uh, or in a more democratic way where uh, business users are uh, main drivers of BI implementation or some mixed um, way? Uh, rules and responsibilities that uh, company should have in order to uh, make sure that all the pieces covered uh, in this journey. That's quite a long journey. Uh, we've dis we've uh, discussed what uh, artifacts in Power BI service uh, can be helpful uh, on a technical level for the uh, discovery, understanding, security access, maintenance, and actuality. And uh, what is left is the operational day-to-day uh, -day development uh, of each of these pieces of uh, data flow, data set, report, dashboard, and application, um, support of the users on daily basis for technical support and also advisory support and uh, 
continuous training because uh, Power BI is changing very, very fast and uh, continuous training is needed for every user. Um, for every user. Uh, from my perspective, what I was thinking uh, can be next step for everyone is to think uh, about the missing pieces from overall picture in your current projects, in some uh, pre-sales project that you may be taking part uh, in. So what of this is not there yet uh, inside our company. Uh, and just uh, for your training, uh, uh, maybe any of this piece was uh, insightful to proceed um, discovering more about it. And that's it from my side. If you have any questions, I would love to hear them and discuss.